Man, that is the smoothest shooting bow I've ever shot. We're here at Ten Point Archery in Chelmsford, Ontario with Dennis Gratton, the owner. And we're talking about our misses for season five. Now he says he has a solution for that. It's called the Bowtech Solution. This is our season finale, our highlight episode for season five. Stay tuned, you're watching Fuel of Fire TV. Life offers no guarantees, but the one thing we've learned for sure is that the time we have is indeed precious. The more time we spend with family, friends, and with nature can make the difference between living a good life and living a great one. Join us on our quest to be participants rather than observers, to learn from our mistakes, to share our successes and our failures, as we spend all of the time we have chasing our dreams, fueling our passion, and fueling the fire in the great outdoors. Dennis I'm so glad to be here how are you very good very good awesome we've been talking about this partnership for some time now with 10 point archery and Dennis Gratton now we've talked about me shooting a new bow this year and I'd like to shoot a bow tech but what are you thinking I'm thinking this would probably be the best bet just because for an all-around hunting bow so you got 30 inch axle to axle nice and compact plenty of speed 335 and you got a nice long brace height so it's good for those tight shots you know, tight shots so great for ground blinds great for tree stand hunting plus it's probably one of the quietest bows in my shop now i have heard that it is super quiet yeah. and i've also had issues in the ground blind with turkey right that bow being a little exactly. bit higher yeah. so what this do we say you're really going to appreciate this bow because it's just made for tight fits not an extra long bow right i think you're really going to enjoy this bow. super light yep 30 inch axle to axle. I think we're gonna put some components on this bow and I'm gonna take it into the range. I Let's set it up. Great idea. Awesome. All right. Man, I just can't get over the technology that advances in such short order. So you guys got to see our archery season and man, what an archery season it was. It was full of ups and downs for all of our pro staff. The season started off for the West Enders with Cody and Kaylee targeting some bucks. Now Kaylee got in on nice and close on one of her target bucks and missed by inches. And as we all know, archery is a game of inches. They hunted hard for Kaylee's deer, but it just didn't happen. Cody got out a few more times, and if it wasn't for bad luck, they'd have no luck at all. Because although he saw a shooter 160 plus, a monster for Manitoulin, he also couldn't get to close the distance with his bow. He kept on that deer all season, even letting decent deer walk to live another day. Aspen did the exact same thing. She fell in love with a 10 pointer. She saw it during archery and she just couldn't bring herself to harvest any other deer but that one. That's commendable for Aspen. We talked a lot about pulling that trigger and you pull the trigger on the deer you want to harvest, nobody else. Archery season came and went and I had to take the opportunity that Brad Fife presented up in Fort Francis. He had some monster bucks on film. I was so excited to get there and it happened fast. It was absolutely a highlight for me for season five. There's a big swamp behind us and they cruise along this bog. There's, there's sign in here like crazy. I'm gonna get set up here. I've been here for the whole day. We'll see what happens.
peeled off. I'm gonna go jack him out and see what we got. I know. Yes. Oh, 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 there he is. A Northern Ontario swamp buck. Wow. This is the guy we were after. Nice chocolate rack. I can't thank Brad enough. That's fantastic opportunity for myself. We're out here fueling our passion, fueling the fire and getting outdoors. What a deer, what a hunt. Thanks to Brad. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome back to the program, folks. We're at 10 Point Archery with Dennis Gratton, and we are in the market for a crossbow. Again, we're trying to stack the odds this season in our favor, and we've got some pro staff that are looking to harvest an animal or two with a crossbow. We've got Aspen. Now, she's five foot tall. Uh, we've got some taller shooters up to six feet, six foot two. And what, what do you suggest here? Well, I think the good choice would be the Assassin 360. Just because anybody can shoot this bow, it doesn't matter if you're a 12 year old, if you're in your late 70s, because you got the internal crank, it's super easy to function, you know what I mean? Anybody right. can shoot this and it's very light. Now it's fast, mean? right? Yeah, 360 feet per second and there's tons of adjustability to this. So if you're a short frame shooter, you can bring that stock right in. Right. If you're setting it up for a taller guy, you can bring the stock out just to get that perfect feel. So you're saying anyone can shoot this Anybody bow? Anybody at all. Like maybe Jonathan? I think he could. All right. Well, we're going to take this into the range and we're going to put the assassin, AKA Jonathan, to the test. Oh, 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 that was a good shot, man. I don't know if that was luck. What do you think it was? Just expertise? I think it was expertise. Oh, jeez, <laughs> this guy. I know he's good behind the camera. And you nailed that shot. Just like Diane did in her second moose ever, which was our first season, our first episode on season five, where she was shooting with a Benelli, the new Lupo rifle. Now, I love this gun, and she held her composure and made a fantastic shot. It was definitely a highlight for me. Teach. Well, there you go. Diane gets her second bull uh, in her lifetime, right? Just a fantastic shot. Man, it came together so fast. And so perfectly. It came out right where we expected it to come out. Oh, I was so proud of Diane on, on making that shot. And you know, the funny thing was, or I don't know if it was funny, but it was definitely a coincidence. We went out with the Wingish film crew, which you were a part of at the time, and we hunted that very same area for a bull that we knew was there. That was a memorable hunt. Oh yeah, 
was a great hunt. And we had a lot of camera angles because we had the film students and it was definitely a highlight for our season as well. You know, we have been chasing this bull and I haven't seen him yet. And uh, I knew there was a bigger bull in here. A great cap off to a great moose season. We had a fantastic time with the Wingish Film Institute with our family and friends. It was just a fantastic time. Yeah, it was a great hunt. Lots of memories. Lots of memories. Stay tuned folks, we'll be right back. middle of the setup. Tackle boxes are all a mess. Just keep going straight, guys. Bring it on this side, Jeff. Come step around, watch that. Nice and straight. Oh, oh yeah. This way, this way, this way. All right, in this week's Wild Game Kitchen, we're doing a completely organic meal, all from produce and protein from Manitoulin Island. So first up, we're gonna actually barbecue some corn on the cob. I'm just gonna put some olive oil on this corn cob here, and I'm gonna put a little bit of some all-spice garlic and some pepper. And because it takes a little bit longer, we're gonna put it in prior to putting our, our rainbow trout on the grill. Now we love to fish and we love to eat what we catch. We do practice catch and release, but we also release sometimes into the grease. Today, we're releasing onto the barbecue. So the first thing we're gonna do is coat that in olive oil. And we're also gonna sear that when we put that onto the grill. The other thing that I like to do is slice some lemons and oranges, just some citrus flavor. But it also, when we're searing that rainbow trout on the grill, I like to put these down because it doesn't stick. We're only gonna sear it for uh, about a minute before we turn it over and cook it. Next up, we're gonna use third boil maple syrup. This is Manitoulin Island maple syrup and we're going to use about a quarter cup or so we're going to put in some minced garlic i love garlic and this is from three forks farms i should probably do two cloves i do like that garlic flavor and maybe we'll do a little bit of soy sauce that's one tablespoon almost two tablespoons then we're going to put in some pepper and then a little bit of garlic salt uh, I'm just gonna use a pinch of garlic salt. We're gonna mix that all up and we're gonna bring this over to the barbecue and get this on the grill. And the reason we put that, that citrus down there is that when we flip it over, we don't want to have that flesh of the rainbow stick to the grill. We're gonna put on our maple syrup. Now I'm gonna be, I'm gonna put on a liberal amount here, let it soak right in. 
I'm going to put the lemons back on with the orange. I'm going to see what it's like in five minutes. All right, we're going to check this out. I'm going to take these off because I want that to caramelize after all of that is that citrus has stayed in there. That needs a little bit more time. Getting there, we're close. I'm gonna give that a little bit, a couple more minutes. All right, I think it's ready. Oh man, that smells good. That is melt in your mouth. All right, this is it. The moment we've been waiting for. Mmm. Carrot, a completely organic meal from the waters of Manitoulin Island and the land, the farms on Manitoulin Island with maple syrup, fresh vegetables. If we're doing a wild game kitchen, you know it's gonna be easy and it's gonna taste delicious. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, that just about does it for season five. We had a fantastic season, despite all of the complications from COVID-19 and the global pandemic. We fought through it all, and we hope you did too while staying safe at the same time. We love fishing and hunting new territory, just like we did when we went with Makwa Adventures into Northern Ontario, and we did some ice fishing on Indian Lake, north of Manitoulin Island. Art Trudeau has a first class operation and we can't wait to get back to fishing with him next year. Oh, maybe, this is a stiffer rod. No, this is a little guy, a little wee guy. So I couldn't feel him with this heavy rod. But that's always good for age class when you're looking at a lake like this and you see little eight inch, nine inch walleye like that. That's great for the lake. It shows you that it's healthy. You've got a good age class in there. And he goes back down into the deeps. I love fishing those healthy lakes. It's great to eat some of those fish, but it's just as good to put them back. Just like we do on Mindamoya Lake on Manitoulin Island. We've got a hundred lakes. Come up and visit us. We'd be glad to have you. Aspen and her cousins have a great time fishing that lake in the summer and in the winter. Oh, let's see what he is. He's good. Maybe he's just like a tiny No, it's a walleye. It's a walleye. I can see him. Oh my God. Oh yeah! <laughs> Look at that guy! Woo! High five! That was a great first walleye for Lake Mindamoya last ice season. It's so much fun bringing your kids, bringing family members, and bringing new people out for that adventure. Just like Aspen did with her friend from Manitoulin Secondary School, another Mustang, Marin. She was out after her first salmon, and it just happened to be her biggest. First up, yeah, 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 your first up. So in your gut, hold it there and reel with your stomach, yeah? Put this right in your gut. Keep this tip up, though. Keep that tip up like that, there you go. Oh, he's screaming live. We are we want to keep going left, okay, Austin? Okay. Trying to get this guy out of the way. We got the net. Just keep that tip up. Just keep that tip up. Oh my god. Just hold him steady. Marin's biggest fish is a uh, six pound bass. Six pound bass. So she's trying for her personal best here. 
Oh my god! Oh, you got him! Good job! This is Marin's great Chinook salmon. I'm gonna give it 11 pounds. Just a fantastic fish and the fight of a lifetime. Her personal best, I don't know, by double. Fueling the passion, fueling the fire, and getting outdoors. Take your kids outside, folks. This is where it's at. All right, that's a wrap for season five. Marin caught an awesome fish, and there's nothing like bringing people who are new to the outdoors or at least new to catching big fish and seeing that smile on their face. That is what Fuel the Fire TV is all about. We've been at it for five seasons, and we're excited about bringing to you season six in 2022. We're gonna be on the World Fishing Network as well, and we hope that that's gonna broaden our horizons. We wanna thank all of our sponsors. There's too many to count right now and mention them all, but we also want to acknowledge our pro staff who are working to create those memories, hopefully inspiring you to get outdoors and enjoy mother nature for what it has to offer. We're looking forward to season six. We hope you'll join us as we continue to fuel our passion, fuel the fire and get outdoors. We'll see you next year. Thank <laughs> you.